Muy bien, muchas gracias. Muy bien, bueno, pues muy buenos días a los que nos siguen por YouTube, que nos están este, tanto de manera sincrónica como asincrónica, escucharán también esta charla. Eh, pues el día de hoy estamos muy contentos de que esté con nosotros, eh, bueno, pues están conectados tanto Alison Mackenzie, eh, que ya la presentaremos en, en un ratito más, y está con nosotros también Salvador Andrade Ortiz. Eh, Salvador, pues es un gran amigo de nosotros, de esta facultad, y también es un gran amigo de, pues, de esta comunidad. Eh, él es de la Enés León. Y bueno, pues realmente tenemos esta relación cercana con la NS León y con eh, pues Chava también, que si me permites decirte Chava, <risa> Chava también este, pues es un gran, un gran compañero y un gran colega. Me voy a permitir leer su semblanza para la charla que tenemos el día de hoy. Eh, Salvador Andrade Ortiz es maestro en administración por las universidades de Western Kentucky, de Moncton y la Autónoma de Querétaro e ingeniero industrial y de sistemas por el Instituto Tecnológico y de Estudios Superiores de Monterrey. Él es profesor titular A de tiempo completo definitivo y secretario académico de la Escuela Nacional de Estudios Superiores de la Unidad León de la UNAM. Fue jefe de la División de Educación Continua de la Unidad de Extensión en San Miguel de Allende de la ENES León de 2003, 13 a febrero de 2022 y corresponsable de la licenciatura en Administración Agropecuaria de la misma ENES León de 2017 a 2021. Ha realizado diversas actividades de actualización profesional, entre las que destacan su certificación como Cinturón Verde de Seis Sigma por la Universidad de Arizona, el Diplomado en Finanzas por la ENES Unidad León y el Diplomado en Economía Digital por la Comisión Estatal para la Planeación de la Educación Superior del Estado de Guanajuato. Sus líneas de investigación se centran en la economía digital de las MIPIMES y de las redes y cadenas de valor de empresas rurales en este marco. Es corresponsable del programa de servicio social denominado Municipio de León, desde donde se realiza una vinculación con la Dirección de Desarrollo Rural del Municipio de León y la Iniciativa Privada para el Mejoramiento de Micro y Pequeñas Empresas Rurales. Otra de sus líneas de investigación es la aplicación de simuladores empresariales como recursos didácticos para la enseñanza de esta. Es PAPIME, titula, titulado Tecnología Educativa para la Simulación de Actividades Empresariales a través del software de administración Marketplace, Estrategias para la Innovación. También ha realizado cursos y estancias académicas nacionales e internacionales, los más recientes, el diplomado Train the Trainer en eh, la Universidad de Canadá en julio de 2019 con fines de capacitación pedagógica y la visita como profesor investigador a la Universidad de, to de Tokio en Tokio, Japón, de Toyo en Tokio, Japón, en diciembre de 2019. En su desarrollo laboral profesional ha ocupado puestos en áreas comerciales de empresas globales como Grupo Bimbo y Dow Química. Eh, bueno, pues él es Salvador, obviamente esta es una semblanza, lo que significa que es un extracto de su, de su amplia experiencia. Este, y bueno, pues Salvador... Eh, nos va a acompañar también aquí, por supuesto, es parte también de nuestros ponentes y también va a ir eh, tomando las preguntas del público que nos sigue este, de manera eh, sincrónica en este momento por los canales y los que nos siguen aquí también en este, en este auditorio. Eh, voy a presentar ahora a Malison Mackenzie. Eh, Malison, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks again for your time. And so, eh, voy a permitirme leer su semblanza. Alison Mackenzie es profesora titular a tiempo completo de inglés que enseña a los estudiantes de la Facultad de Administración de Empresas de la Universidad de Toyo en Tokio, Japón. Comenzó a enseñar en la universidad en 2007 y actualmente es coordinadora del programa de lectura de la facultad. Tiene una maestría en educación con especialidad en TESOL, así como un posgrado en educación con especialidad en la enseñanza de inglés, francés y Japón a nivel de bachillerato. Ambos títulos son de la Universidad de Wollongong en Nueva Gales del Sur. Es en Australia. Además, es licenciada en Educación Física y en Artes, con especialización en francés por la Universidad de Brock en Ontario, Canadá. Ha impartido clases a nivel secundaria, tanto en Japón como en Australia, y a estudiantes universitarios en México, Canadá y Japón durante más de 25 años. Sus intereses de investigación se centran en la lectura en lengua extranjera o segunda lengua, la fluidez lectora y oral, la adquisición de vocabulario, la comunicación intercultural y la autonomía del alumno. Ha coeditado tres libros de texto sobre el aprendizaje de idiomas y ha impartido numerosos talleres de formación de profesores. En abril de 2017 viajó a Guanajuato, México, para pasar ahí un año sabático en la Universidad Enes León, mientras vivía y pasaba tiempo con dos de sus hermanas residentes hace tiempo en San Miguel de Allende. En febrero de 2018 bajó a Mal, viajó, viajó a Malta, 
para dar una presentación en el Congreso de la Revista Internacional de Artes y Ciencias sobre la recién inaugurada Mediateca de la Unidad en Es León. En su tiempo libre, le gusta viajar, bucear y comer buena comida, especialmente ramen y tacos de pastor. La primera vez que visitó México fue a los 12 años en las vacaciones de verano para visitar, aquí nos cuenta esta anécdota, a su amiga de la primaria que se había mudado a Orizaba, Veracruz. Y desde entonces, parte de su corazón está en México. Su pasatiempo más reciente es ver El Rey de Vicente Fernández en Netflix. <ríe> Ella es Alison Mackenzie, que nos va a estar eh, acompañando también el día de hoy. Y bueno, les platicaba también este, que eh, Chava, que es nuestro, uno de nuestros invitados también estrella, así que estamos muy contentos de que nos acompañe en esta facultad. Eh, bueno, pues Salvador es, eh, como les platicaba, la Enés León, que ustedes ya lo deben de tener también clarísimo, es una de las escuelas de extensión que tiene nuestra universidad, la UNAM. Eh, la escuela de Enés León eh, justo se encuentra ubicada en León. Así es que gracias, eh, Salvador, por, por, por venir desde, desde allá, <ríe> desde León, para visitarnos aquí en la facultad. Y estamos muy contentos con esto. Eh, les platico que, bueno, pues ahorita, en la, siéntese por favor, como siempre, en la libertad de hacer las preguntas que ustedes quieran. Eh, yo me voy a dejar aquí en un minuto para que eh, puedan ustedes eh, al final cuando Chava nos diga que están listos para hacer las preguntas, puedan hacer las preguntas este, ustedes, por favor, y nosotros vamos a ir a seguir llegando a las del canal, ¿de acuerdo? Muy bien, pues bienvenidos a esta conferencia y por favor eh, te dejo en, en las mejores manos. Muy buenos, muy buenos días. La verdad es que es un gusto poder estar aquí en, en la Facultad de Contaduría y Administración. Como bien lo dice Mitzi, eh, es una, una dependencia de la UNAM que, bueno, es muy afín, eh, muy cercana a la Escuela Nacional de Estudios Superiores Unidad León. Eh, y estoy muy contento de poder compartir algo de la experiencia que he tenido con mi gran colega y amiga que se encuentra en estos momentos conectada por Zoom, eh, la maestra Alison Mackenzie. Eh, la verdad es que pues eh, agradezco la oportunidad de poder dirigirme a este grupo de jóvenes tan entusiastas y les comparto que bueno, esta conferencia eh, va a ser en inglés o esta plática va a ser en inglés eh, porque bueno, eh, para apoyar con todo y que la maestra Allison habla algo de español por toda su experiencia en México, ya les platicará un poco del año sabático que hizo en la Enés León. Eh, la vamos a, a hacer en inglés, entonces eh, yo sé que ustedes pues llevan sus clases de inglés, hablan inglés, entonces no va a haber ningún problema. Eh, también quiero bueno, agradecer al titular de la facultad en contaduría y administración, a un gran aliado, un gran amigo, yo diría, del Enés León, al, al maestro Tomás Humberto Rubio Pérez. Muchísimas gracias al señor director de la facultad por abrir estos espacios y permitirnos estar aquí. Por supuesto, a esta gran, eh, gran comunidad. A Mitzi, a, a Elisa y a Rodolfo, que hoy me recibieron con los brazos abiertos. Muchísimas gracias. Y bueno, pues en este momento vamos a cambiar. We're going to switch to English. So, thank you very much for being here. We're going to share um, some of our experiences on these collaborations that we've had um, from um, Enes León and Toyo University. Uh, my dear colleague, Allison. Um, hi, Ali. I, I hi. call her Ali because she's my friend too. Yeah, no, everyone calls me Ali, so please, let's just keep it with that. I only hear Allison when my mother's angry at me. Allison! <laughs> so let's keep it to Ali. So we'll stick to Ali. Thank you, Ali. Okay, thank you so much. So this is the agenda. Um, we're going to start with a brief intro, well, an introduction um, for 20 minutes, the collaboration for 20 more minutes, um, uh, where we're going to talk about our global exchange workshop and our research that we've been doing. And we have five minutes for conclusions. And of course, we're going to open the, the forum for some questions or comments from you guys and from the people that are following us in, in YouTube. All right, so now um, my uh, Ali is gonna start with some of the some of the features of uh, of Toyo University, so you guys can know a little better of of Toyo. Okay, thanks a lot, Salvador. Um, and I'd like to say thank you a lot also for inviting me to uh, participate in this excellent uh, fair. I'm really excited to um, share some of the um, different things that uh, Salvador and I've been doing for the past number of years. 
So I'll give you a little bit of background on Toyo University so that you have a little bit of context uh, to connect to um, where what I'm doing uh, in Tokyo, Japan. So the university is um, uh, a little bit old. It was founded 135 years ago in 1887. And it was originally founded as a philosophy academy um, by a uh, renowned Japanese scholar called uh, Mr. En, well, Professor Endio Inoue. And he was also a, a Buddhist scholar, uh, an author, and a philosopher. And um, after founding Toyo University from 1888 until his death in 1919, he gave lectures all over Japan um, and all over the world. Actually, he did three world tours um, and he was quite a, a renegade in his time. Um, so then about 20 years after its foundation, the name changed to Toyo University, the current name we have now. And currently Toyo University consists of a um, postgraduate law faculty. We also have 15 graduate schools. We've got 13 undergraduate faculties, uh, a total of 40, uh, 45 departments, I believe it is, uh, various research institutes, uh, five affiliated high schools. And um, we serve a body of um, over 30,000 students on five different campuses in Tokyo and just a little bit outside of Tokyo, the surroundings. Um, and a, a very interesting fact is that it was the very first private university in Japan to enroll female students in 1916. So we're quite innovative in that sense. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a university that offers opportunities to all kinds of students. Um, and we have a, also a very good scholarship program. Uh, that was one of the um, wishes of, of uh, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Inoue was that it's, uh, it allows accessible education to all students. So um, what I'll do next is, um, Salvador, I can't really see the PowerPoint, but can we, um, uh, we're still on the main page, um, and I want to talk a little bit about Toyo University. Uh, we're a member of something in Japan called the Top, uh, Top Global University Project, and that was a 10-year initiative that was started by the Ministry of Education in Japan uh, in 2014, so almost 10 years ago, we're almost finished that 10 year period. And the goal of the um, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, it's uh, called MEXT for short, MEXT. The goal of MEXT was to implement, implement university reforms, uh, also um, to encourage internationalization uh, because Japan has tended to be quite inward looking. So they were looking to expand the focus. And um, in total, out of uh, 775 possible universities that could have uh, gotten chosen, we were one of 37. So it was quite an accomplishment for our university to be chosen for this very, very special program. Um, we received, we're receiving grants still now over that 10 year program. And the grants are aimed to um, help better develop leaders, uh, uh, global leaders, um, to become more uh, internationalized. And the, the different um, things that that includes is uh, attracting more exchange students, also increasing the number of courses available in other languages. So for example, especially in English, but in other languages, uh, Chinese, uh, different Asian languages, uh, German, a little bit of Spanish as well. Um, and especially uh, with that, to strengthen our own students' abilities uh, with a focus on building up their English skills so that um, we can send more of our students to study abroad. That was one of the uh, big focuses. Uh, another focus was on hiring a more diverse faculty, um, faculty from abroad. So to really truly try to globalize and internationalize our university. And um, another 
thing was establishing partnerships with universities around the globe. Um, and as of uh, uh, June, ju the end of July of this year, uh, Toyo University was affiliated with 212 overseas partner institutions. And um, a final thing uh, is uh, we also focus on uh, inviting foreign researchers to collaborate here at Toyo. And with that, I'll move on to uh, pass the mic over to Salvador so he can tell you all about his um, experience at our university as a um, visiting professor. So, Salvador. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, well, thanks for that introduction about um, Toyo University and uh, how it um, went or oh, it has this uh, um, vision uh, towards internationalization. And well, in, in this um, intervention, I would like to uh, explain a little bit of what Enedis Leon is. And um, it's also its, um, its plans for national and international projection. So Enedis Leon, uh, the National School of Higher Education in Leon, we have 10 majors, uh, which include one that is really um, close to business administrations, the one you have, uh, the ones you, you guys have in here, which is, um, um, livestock and agricultural management. Um, so that's why we have this um, closeness to the faculty of uh, accounting and management here at um, a university city. Um, one of the main um, points that our Dean Laura Costa <clears throat> in, her, in her institutional plan 2021, 2025 has pointed out, um, of course, this is all aligned with our um, general UNAM uh, plan by our chancellor, Dr. Enrique Grau Vigeres. Um, but this, um, this program 2.6 of NS Leon specially um, tries to boost the links with international and international um, institutions. In this case, we are here talking with an international institution, institution with Ali represents University of Toyo, but like this one, we have uh, many others um, in our different majors um, that also represent um, these links that we're trying to boost. Um, we also try or want to strengthen the bonds among entities with similar academic programs. And this is what I've been talking about, like entities, national entities and international entities with similar academic programs. One of the um, specific things of NS Leon is that we have four majors from the social sciences. So we have that one that I just mentioned, and we also have um, industrial economics. We have tourism, uh, our newest major, and we also have territorial development. So we have four from the social sciences. We have four from um, chemistry, biologic, uh, biologics, biologics, and health um, that are dentistry, um, optometry, physical therapy, and um, one that is driven for research, which is uh, agrogenomic sciences. And we have two from the arts and humanities, which are the major in translation and the major in um, intercultural development. So we are a multidisciplinary um, entity. And that also broadens up or gives us a lot of opportunity to look for certain partnerships in different disciplines. So that's one of the particularities that we have um, in NS Leon. And of course, I'm here because I'm um, part of the business uh, livestock and agricultural management. That's why um, I have a close relationship with this faculty and um, their professors. Um, we also, um, in, this, in this case, would like to take advantage of the new technologies like we're doing now. Ali, um, just for you to know, Ali, is, um, it's late in Japan. It's a Friday night. Um, <laughs> And it's probably like 12 a.m. Ali. What what time is it now? Uh, yeah, it's almost midnight. Almost midnight. So, um, yeah, it's almost midnight there. Um, we have a uh, very a lot of challenges um, to that we're gonna also talk about that. But it's Friday night for Ali. So also Ali, thank you very much for this effort and joining us on a Friday night in Japan. Um, anyways, so take this uh, advantages. Um, Virtual, virtual uh, advantages like we're doing now, it's one of the points that um, our NS Leon plan of institutional development um, tries, to, tries to do. 
um, also host activities that will introduce our community to new ideas and international trends like conference. So as you may know, there are international trends. So we would like, we have a lot of international conference in all different majors and postgraduate degrees or graduate degrees, sorry. So that's another of our activities. And also um, increase our number of international networks. So that's a very important part. Um, we try that our faculty join a lot of uh, international networks um, in the different disciplines. So I'm sure that now we're building one here and also, um, well, the one we've built with, with Japan. So real briefly, I would like to share with you guys. Um, in the meanwhile that I'd share, can someone tell me from what major are you guys from? Management? And what is it? Are you, are, are you all part of one class? Same class? No, different classes? Okay. Different courses? Management, okay. Um, so, so real quick, I wanna show you my visit. Guys, this was an amazing experience. Um, I went to Japan, to Tokyo for three weeks and um, it, was, it was great to get to see the Japanese culture by the way, I barely made it through COVID because I went there in December of 2019. So it would have been um, two or three months later, I would have been um, screwed because I wouldn't be able to go. So I was really happy that I, uh, I got to go. Um, of course, I have all the experiences in many cities in Japan, um, but um, I'm here to talk about the academic experience who was really really great um i have uh, the opportunity we'll have a welcome party from the japanese um faculty and and administrators um which was very nice there at the university here's ali and myself with all the crew um of toyo um very well um welcoming and well i have to um do some academic activities that included um a talk or yeah a talk to um, business management as well as students. And this talk was driven to a very important thing that we have in Leon that maybe I'm sure you guys know. Um, we have a automotive cluster in, in Leon, Guanajuato that has um, many original equipment manufacturers and four of them are Japanese. So out of the, we have five in total, but out of the five, four of them are Japanese. So we have uh, Toyota, Mazda, Ino Motors, um, Honda and one American, which is General Motors. So our Japanese population in Leon is very interesting because we have a lot of people from Japan working for these companies. And um, well, this also adds to the, um, the opportunities that Ali and I saw in order to do some research on that matter. So these are some pictures of my, 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 my talk. Uh, over there was uh, around 150 people or students there. And well, to be honest with you, it was very enriching. We had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and Salvador, may I just add, uh, I think your talk was one of the best attended talks that we, we've had uh, for the visiting researchers. Um, yeah, the, we, my faculty was very happy with the number of students that showed up for your talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so that's like summarizing great experience, personal, academic, research, everything was great. Um, Japan, it's amazing. Toyo University is amazing. So now I'll have passed the, um, the stick to Ali so she can talk to us about her sabbatical in NS Leon. Okay, excellent. Thanks a lot, Salvador. So um, basically, uh, yeah, um, are there two other posters or is that the yep. only one there? Okay, excellent, taking a little time. Okay, so basically in uh, April, from April of 2017 uh, for one year until um, March of 2018, I had the uh, wonderful opportunity to spend a year in Mexico with um, Unidad Inés León. And um, 
Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Actually, uh, wonderful. I, I first met Salvador, I think it was in 2015, maybe Salvador, when I was visiting my sisters. As you heard in the introduction, um, two of my sisters uh, were living in Mexico, uh, in San Miguel de Allende at the time. And uh, I was visiting them. And I knew that I had the opportunity to do a sabbatical coming up. So I thought, wow, what a, a, a great chance to spend a year with my sisters visiting them and also uh, have my sabbatical. So I knew there was a small campus, small campus of UNAM uh, in San Miguel de Allende. So I visited the campus and uh, yeah, very small at the time. And um, I spoke to the receptionist and I said, you know, I'm interested in uh, talking to somebody about doing research here. And so I met Salvador. And um, I, I'll never forget the first uh, time we met Salvador because, um, you know, I had done a little bit of research on UNAM. And uh, I remember when we met, I said to you, yeah, uh, I, I work at a university in, in Tokyo, and it's a rather large university in Japan, 30,000 students. I think we have 33,000 full-time undergraduate students. It's quite large. It's considered quite large here. So I said to Salvador upon meeting him, um, you know, I think our universities are quite similar. Uh, we have uh, 30,000 undergrad students similar to UNAM. And <laughs> Salvador's face kind of Ali, uh, we have 300,000 students. <laughs> and then my face dropped because my jaw dropped because I couldn't believe that any university could have so many students. And now I heard that it's even more. It's like uh, 340,000 <laughs> students. So yeah, that was a, a big shock for me finding that out. Um, but then Salvador proposed that I go to the Leon campus because the campus in San Miguel was too small to get any research done. So um, I couldn't organize that trip uh, uh, in, at that time. That was in 2015 when I was visiting my sisters. So he proposed uh, that I visit uh, a, and talk to uh, Maestro de la Fuente. Uh, so I think I organized that on my next trip in 2016. In April, I visited Mexico again. And I, I organized a trip to uh, go to Leon. My sister, who was living there, said, Ali, I'll drive you there. And she had just had a baby. She had a one-year-old daughter. And so we put her in the baby car and we drove from San Miguel to Leon. And we got to the campus. Um, and I was very well received. Uh, Maestro took me into his office and uh, said, so uh, tell me, how was your trip here? How did you get here? And I said, oh, my sister drove me here. She's waiting out on the sofa with my little niece. And um, Maestro said to me, oh, go get her. Come on, bring her into the office. And for me, having worked in Japan for, at that time, 20, more than 20 years, um, that was a big culture shock because in Japan, that would never happen. If you have an official meeting to talk about a sabbatical, um, you do that only with the people making the decision. So I was very shocked. And uh, so my sister came in, joined us. We talked for maybe five or 10 minutes. And then Maestro de la Fuente said to me, oh, please wait here for a few minutes. And he left the office. And he uh, came back and said, okay, Allison, please come with me. And I went into another room and I spoke with four of the English uh, teachers at the, um, at the uh, campus. And we spent, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes talking. And then he said, okay, please go back and wait with your sister. And um, he talked with the teachers for a few minutes more. And then he came back to the office and said, welcome to, um, <laughs> welcome to, uh, um, to NS uh, Leon. Please come next year for your sabbatical. And that was another big culture shock for me because in Japan, those kinds of decisions take months to happen, not minutes. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was a second big culture shock for me uh, getting <laughs> ready for my sabbatical. So anyways, getting to the sabbatical, 
Um, I went to uh, Mexico in uh, April. And then as you can see on the slides, uh, I presented a couple of um, uh, different workshops to students, pronunciation workshops and uh, vocabulary workshops. I also did a teacher, two teacher training courses, one in Leon, one in San Miguel de Allende. And the, the thing that really impressed me was the enthusiasm of, of the students, of the uh, professors, of the teachers, the friendliness, the kindness, the warmth. Um, I just really was so well accepted. And uh, for the, the seminars, the workshops that I put on for the students, uh, it was uh, another big shock to me um, how how they were so uh, communicative. And because in Japan, students don't tend to uh, ask questions. They're quite silent. So when I was bombarded with questions and the students were actively participating, I just felt what an excellent and wonderful environment uh, to be in. So I, I really envied uh, all of the staff and students at, um, at the campus there. It was just a absolutely wonderful experience. Um, and then uh, beyond that, I also, I was working with one of the instructors there. They had just started up uh, Mediateca in uh, Leon. So I was uh, doing a little research on that and I went to Malta in, um, Oh gosh, when was that? That would have been maybe February, just before the end of my sabbatical. And I presented uh, on the uh, information I had learned about the Mediateca there. So all in all, my one year sabbatical was uh, just an unforgettable and amazing year. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that's all I have to say about that. But yeah, what a remarkable experience for me. Thank you so much to everyone at uh, UNAM and at NS as well. Thank you. And thanks, Salvador, for the opportunity to do that. Thank you, Ali. Likewise. Um, yeah, let me tell you that this faculty of um, accounting and, and management is one of the biggest one in, in UNAM. They have uh, around, you tell me, guys, 16,000, 17,000 students. Wow. More? Yeah. More than that? 18, 19, 20? 18? 10,000. Oh, okay. Well, still very big. Um, thank you. 10,000 students um, and a lot of uh, faculty as well. And I'm sure they're as um, participative, yeah, I guess that's a word, <laughs> um, as the people in San Miguel. And we're going to have a lot of questions and comments from them when we finish. All right. So let's move on to our collaboration. Um, so this is, these are the specific activities that we've been um, doing um, for the last, let's say, um, actively for the last maybe two or three years, um, three years maybe now. Um, so we designed this global exchange um, workshop. Um, this global exchange workshop, um, we meet uh, maybe four, five times a year um, to share um, with our students, the NS Leon students and the Toyo University students, some topics that we'd like to discuss either um, from the live in Mexico and Japan or even um, farther than that. So the objective of this global workshop um, we've defined it is to build a collaborative environment among students and faculty in order to discuss and promote different topics oriented to business management and culture in the English language. So as they say, we kill two birds with one stone because we practice English. So our students are practicing the English language, but we as well are talking about um, business management topics, culture topics, um, some of the um, economic topics that are um, all around the globe. And um, so we choose some of these topics that come from our, from our students, um, let's say that we have a meeting this week, um, this workshop, and then at the end of the session, we'll be like, so guys, what do you wanna talk about the next session? Session? Any options, any comments on, uh, on a topic that you would like to go through? And so we get a lot of feedback from them. So this is, these are uh, the sessions that we've had so far. 
Our first one was in, in February of 2021 with the impacts of foreign direct investments in, in Japan and Mexico, of course, because that was our, our first topic that we uh, worked together. So we decided that was we, uh, our, our, first, our first one. And then right after that, uh, we talked about challenges to doing business in a foreign country. So you, you guys, I'm sure you know the, the different um, challenges that uh, we people as ma uh, managers um, have to deal with with the different cultural aspects of all the different countries, even um, inside our countries, like people from Leon probably won't do business the same way as people from Mexico City or Monterrey or Guadalajara. So even in the countries, we have different ways of um, doing business and relate to people. Um, in October 2021, we went to new ways to consume the impact of COVID-19. So this was a, a very popular one. We have 24 participants in this one. So yeah, you know, we talk about all the consumism and how COVID changed that. Um, November 2021, we talk about COVID and the economy and tourism um, with 16 participants. February, 20, February of this year, um, business perspective of national holidays. So that was uh, one with very cultural uh, driven one. Um, May 2022, we talked about Japan and Mexico, cultural differences and similarities with 12 participants. So we're planning our next one for October, mid-October, um, October the 12th. And uh, maybe we can um, um, invite some of the students here. Like it will, be, it will be nice to have a couple of you guys so you can share. Um, one of these topics with students from Japan. Let me let me tell you this: the students from NS Leon um, keep in touch with students of Japan of Tokyo um, by themselves, and they develop some kind of friendships. So who knows? Maybe um, you get some invites, or you invite a um, uh, uh, student from from Tokyo, and you um, start networking networking with um, with people from abroad. And we've been, we've been growing. Um, we've had more faculty. Um, it was just uh, Ali and myself um, that joined. Probably Watson joined us. Watson is a dear, a dear professor. Um, Ali calls him Watson. I don't remember his real name, but obviously his real name is Japanese. He'll tell us in a second. Sato, Sato Sensei. Sato Sensei. Okay, so um, Watson, um, he joined us and he's another um, another professor and we also had professors from Leon and professors from other universities or other majors in Toyo University. So we've been growing with more faculty and with try to you know, involve more students. And I was saying, as I was saying before, students keep in touch with, with their peers in the other country by different means. And uh, well, we try to use uh, of new, to, new, new tools that work as means of communication. Um, so these new tools, like we know WhatsApp very well, but they have another tool in Japan that is more used than WhatsApp. So um, we'll talk about that um, later. So overall, this is like our experience in the Global Exchange um, Workshop. I don't know if, um, Ali, do you want to add something that I was missing? about this? No, I think you've covered it very, very well. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, a brief clip. I want to show you guys how this um, these workshops um, seem. Um, this, I think this was our very first one. So we're, we're going to have like an introduction. Maybe I'll fast forward um, to the... Um, uh, to the part where we start discussing the topic because at first it's just like the... Um, the, the, the introducing ourselves so it's, it's five minutes it's not a long clip but still i think i'm gonna fast forward here in a I'm little bit i'm very um excited about this project thank you very much for joining and to the toyo students as well thank you so very much for joining and i hope we can have um not only today but also in the future that we can build a, a great connection and continue this um this exchange of uh, talking and, and knowledge, and et cetera, et cetera. How about when the person talks, they choose someone to go? Salvador. Thank you very much for, for your introduction. I'm as well really, really happy to be here. We've been talking about this 
So here we all introduce ourselves. Round three, we were like, so this is this is Sato Sensei Watson and um, several students, well, some students from Japan and some of our students. Where we can speak about um, this very important topic. So, of course, the, the wages um, definitely are some important factor. But yeah, in, in uh, uh, this first intervention, yeah, how entertaining it is, uh, the this model of countries and specific It was around the three minute mark. Or, yeah. Automotive investment in the region or in Mexico in general. I know we are a strong uh, country that produces a lot of parts and 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 well, you know, the cars themselves. For thank you. Um, let me just take the hand down. Okay. Yeah. So well, I'm not really sure about Japan. I do apologize for that. But I do have some other questions because. While I was doing some research, I was talking to a friend from Argentina. Yeah, I also want to, to add some um, comment about uh, Viviana said and um, Japanese um, automotive industry have um, worked in, in Asia. Thank you, I'm Tanaki. And uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, I uh, was mistaken, uh, if I, if I didn't understand uh, Well, a little bit. I mean, I I know we can listen that well, but um, this is um, a part of our first workshop with uh, there was an Italian there were well that's another um, another important thing from from our workshop that um, we have people since Japan is a, like an international um, university as yes, sorry Toyo is an international university as Ali was saying um, we usually have students from many different countries in Asia like we have uh, Chinese Vietnamese of course Japanese um, many different students that will also or will always will enrich the discussion because sometimes we'll also talk about what is happening in their countries um, uh, around the topic that we're discussing. Um, so that's that's um, our workshop, one of our activities and other of our activities. It's um, some research that Ali and myself have been going through. And um, well, here are some of the, of the activities that we've done in this in this topic, Ali. Okay, well, yeah, actually, in the past video, we saw uh, Take, he was uh, the guy who talked a little bit about foreign direct investment. And um, Salvador was kind enough uh, a few years back to actually interview him. And uh, I use that interview video in one of my classes. Uh, the topic is foreign direct investment. And uh, I based my reading class on case studies. So um, not only do the students read a uh, case study on the topic, but they also have supplementary uh, listening activities, uh, they do speaking class, etc. So that was really great. Um, yeah, we're working on a, uh, we, we've already done one publication, which was connected to that topic. And we're working on a, a new topic. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, Salvador, the new topic that we're working on? Yeah, sure. So um building on our collaboration um we've uh, we want to go over a new um a new workshop article so fortunately um ali she's um editor are you see the ed the editor ali of the journal um i'm not the editor but i am the uh, english proofreader english checker okay so um, she's part of the, the team the uh, and we're we're trying to build um, this new article on how our sessions and um, have been going. We we just had an interview last Monday, I think, um, with um, students, one student from Toyo and one student from Enes Leon. 
and we um, we talked about their experience. So Ali was kind enough to design uh, 11 questions, and they have to pick three out of the 11 and talk about their experience um, during these workshops that they've uh, joined. So it's going to be more um, towards um, teaching and learning and all that um, kind of stuff that are also part of our research lines. So that's going to be our, our next uh, article that we're uh, building. I don't know if you want to add something about that, Ali. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, more experiential and how the students are learning and gaining and benefiting from the workshops that we're offering. All right. Um, so we're getting to a, our conclusion. Um, so we have many, many challenges, um, also a lot of opportunities. Um, so we want to keep growing, right? Uh, we want to attract universities from other countries to collaborate. Um, we have uh, many or several uh, collaborations, so we would like to join some other countries. You'll be amazing if we can have uh, other countries that will join these topics and will enrich the, the discussion. Um, one of our challenges is to keep the student engagement. Um, it's, um, it's interesting, once they're there, they're really happy, but um, sometimes it's hard um, for, for, for us to, to keep the, the engagement. Um, we, need, or we will um, try to get some new strategies and tactics in order to keep the engagement from, from our students, which they're really um, enthusiastic, that's the truth. Um, but we, we have this, um, this challenge. Of course, the timetable and time difference. Um, I think this is one of our biggest uh, challenges. As I was saying, we have, a, I, I think now it's 13 hour um, difference or something like that. Four, 14, 14, 14 hour difference. Um, Japan is 14 hours ahead of us. Um, so it's, um, it's hard to try to set up um, a time that will work for the both of us. Normally we do it at night here in Mexico and early morning in Japan, that's our normal thing. And today was the other way around, but um, normally we do our workshops, let's say 6 p.m. in Mexico and 8 a.m. in Japan, something like that. Um, and also they have a busy schedule, the students there. And um, yeah, it has to be like early so they can be able to join. Um, we have different communication tools like WhatsApp. It will be so easy that in Japan, or it will be easy if in Mexico, we will use Line. Line is the WhatsApp from Japan. So if they will use um, WhatsApp there or we'll use Line, it will be so much easier because you will probably just make a WhatsApp group as we all do. And it will uh, make the thing so much easier. Um, we implement this Slack thing, uh, which is probably some guys, of, uh, some of you guys know um, this tool um, to try to keep communication and we'll also email, which um, some students or some people here in Mexico don't use it a lot anymore, but that's one of our, our tools um, that we're, we're using. And will also benefit from the diverse environment. There was in the, in the video, there was an Italian guy. And as I was saying, there are so many people from, from other countries, especially in Asia, that um, this diversity, um, as you may know, of course, diversity as one of the um, pushers or elements of innovation. So diversity is a very important part of our activities. And we totally encourage that to happen. And well, happily, I've always said that um, before signing a formal agreement, you need to have activities in order to justify it. So after working for three years in all this uh, workshops, research and everything, because universities can have many formal agreements, but zero activities. So we did it the other way around. So we started with the, with the activities, um, the um, uh, the workshop, the research, and some other activities that we we're planning to have. And um, after that, um, Ali kindly um, will, he, uh, she, sorry, she uh, um, reached the International Affairs Office. And uh, we have a, a formal agreement that Ali is going to talk a little bit about. 
Okay. Um, yeah, well, actually, uh, I, I think the situation, the worldwide situation, I don't know if I can say the word, you know, we might get banned from YouTube or whatever, but um, it could have happened a lot sooner had it not been for what's been happening in the world for the past two and a half years. Um, but yeah, finally, uh, we had the agreement between our two universities that was signed um Last month, it was finally signed last month, and uh, I'm so pleased that, that that formal agreement has taken place. Um, I think that it shows a lot for the work that uh, Salvador, uh, our students, um, myself, my colleagues here have been doing. Also, don't forget Robbo. He's um, one of the, uh, Graham Robson is a professor in um, the Faculty of International Tourism here at uh, Toyo University. He always has his students um, participate. So we really have a great, as Salvador said, great diverse group of people, uh, international. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, more collaboration, continued collaboration and expanding it. So I Thank think that's all for, for me, Salvador. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. And I, I like to point out that it was signed by the president of Toyo University. So it's like um, the president um, signed it. And of course, um, our dean in Nesleon, Dr. Laura Susana Costa Torres. Um, all right, guys. So this is all we got. Arigato gozaimasu. That's uh, a thank you. And in, in Japanese, is the only word I learned, to be honest with you. But <laughs> um, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, this is our information. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, we have a raised hand here. We have a uh, YouTube questions. Thank you. Um, empezamos con las de aquí o las de YouTube. Aquí, ¿verdad? Adelante, muchas gracias. Go ahead. Ah. Well, what did could you tell us maybe, I don't know, both of you or Salvador, yeah. could you tell us what you think was the biggest challenge that this pandemic brought to businesses and in general to the economy and what can we learn from it? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, so many challenges um, COVID brought us, of course. Um, I think the challenges are particular in every industry. Like, I, it's hard for me to uh, give a general overview of the challenges. But um, for instance, one of the most um, um, hit industries was tourism, right? But tourism right now is reactivating as we haven't seen before. Um, of course, maybe academic tourism or um, business tourism. We can do it by um, Zoom, but the recreational, uh, recreational tourism, um, it's like boosting so hard, impressively. Um, so this, um, of course, I'm sure you guys know how the supply chain management, that, sorry, the supply chains um, are struggling all around the world. So I think in general, the biggest challenge that this COVID thing brought us was um, how, show us how weak our supply chains are because um, all the world, of course, we get, let's say the, the companies or the original equipment manufacturers in Guanajuato, let's just set an example, Mazda in Salamanca, um, some of their components, they brought them from Asia, Japan, China, um, some of other components, they brought them from South America, Brazil, some of other the components that come from Europe. So this, um, this supply chains, uh, at some point um, was uh, were wrecked, and uh, that's how we uh, knew how weak our supply chains are. So in business, if I had to say what will be like our biggest challenge that this COVID nineteen um, uh, showed us, it's our supply chain weaknesses, and specifically in Mexico, I mean it's very obvious how we um, struggle, especially with um, uh, supply chains of food, which is the the major that I'm involved to. I mean, the avocado supply chains. We all know that they stopped uh, one of our mo um, agriculture com commodities that we export a lot to the U.S. Especially, it was stopped for a while. So 
that's that will be like my my general overview of the supply chains. What the for me was the biggest challenge in business um, business talking. Thank you. Um, should I read the ones from from YouTube? This is a question in Spanish, Ali. This is gonna be out there for you. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. All right. Um, Ali, ¿Sí? ¿cuál ha sido el mayor aprendizaje que te dejó México? Y después, ¿cuál ha sido el mejor aprendizaje que te dejó Japón? Adelante. Um, you were chopping up a little there. ¿Puedes repetir, re, re, um, repetir, repetir. repetirlo? Yeah. ¿Cuál ha sido el mejor aprendizaje que te dejó México? Mm -hmm. Para mí pienso que lo mejor era de aprender cómo uh, ser como paci la pa paciencia, to be patient, because porque aquí en Japón todo funcione por la hora, exactamente, pero en México um, ahorita, mañana, right? It's the careful, typical careful. word. Careful. <laughs> so um, I learned patience and um, I learned to, I would say, just to learn to be and to connect more with what's happening right now and just be happy in the moment. Uh, I love that part of Mexican culture. I, I really, I it took a big adjustment, but I really love that part. Thanks, great question. <laughs> and also, well, that's about me. That was for me, okay. But what what I really loved and in, loved about uh, being there was the joy and the friendliness of the Mexican people, because that doesn't happen so easily in Japan. It's a different type of culture. Uh, so for me, that was the the part where I learned patience was where it challenged me and the part where I saw the love and joy of the people enriched me so both both were great learning experiences great thank you para mí el mejor aprendizaje que me dejó Japón bueno en realidad estuve allá tres semanas eh, la verdad uno de los países eh, yo lo he platicado mucho con Ali a mí me encantaría poder ir a hacer un sabático a, a Tokio ahí a Toyo porque fue una experiencia eh, increíble eh, en términos eh, personales bueno fueron muchas cosas las que yo vi allá eh, sobre todo el tema de lo que menciona Ali pero al revés no yo creo que existe un balance lo he platicado con Ali eh, aquí la voy a ventanear un poco eh, ella comenta lleva 24 años por ahí viviendo en Japón Ali 20, 24 un poco más un poco más, un poco más. en los últimos 30 años 27 20, 27 27. Entonces ella me comentaba que le gusta un poco el caos, ¿no? De México y el caos en el buen sentido de la palabra, ¿no? Cuando uno se va a los extremos, este, pues lo que quiere es a lo mejor la otra parte, ¿no? Y Ali en este momento a lo mejor está buscando un poco más de caos en su vida después de estar 27 años en Japón viviendo con las reglas eh, a rajatabla. Y bueno, a mí yo estoy del otro lado. Yo quiero un poco de disciplina y un poco de puntualidad. Entonces, eh, fue lo que me gustó, los trenes a tiempo. Impresionante la tecnología este, en, que se vive allá en, en Japón. Pero también es, es muy su género y es particular porque hay mucha tecnología, pero también en una de nuestras sesiones hablábamos de cómo todavía siguen usando el fax. Yo les pregunto, eh, pues, no sé si ustedes conozcan el fax. El fax, este, esta máquina que, es, que se usaba para mandar... Eh, memos o documentos, eh, pero en México, bueno, pues yo ya no las veo por ningún lado, no sé ustedes, perdón, hace 20 años, ¿no? 20 years ago. Sí, pero aquí hay empresas que todavía utilizan los fax. No, ahora no, no, no tan mucho, pero... Pero nos hablaban, por ejemplo, le preguntamos a Watson y lo tengo muy presente. Eh, que decía que hasta el 80% de las, de las oficinas todavía en Japón siguen usando el fax. Entonces, eh, pues es como un, un claro oscuro, ¿no? De decir, tiene una tecnología impresionante en muchos sentidos, 
y por otro lado siguen utilizando tecnología de hace 20 años. Entonces, esa fue una de, de las cosas que, que me llamaron mucho la atención, entre otras cosas como, por ejemplo, no veis un solo perro callejero, ¿no? Este, esa es una de las cosas que también este, sí, estaba sí. muy interesante. Sí, sí, adelante, gracias. Para Alison. I have some question for Alice. Alice, yes. which is the quantity of students or abroad students in Toyo University? Uh -huh. the, the international students? Yeah, international students, yeah. Okay, well, you have to understand that after COVID, or uh, during COVID, Japan completely shut its borders, which meant that um, uh, even people, there was one time where even people like me, I have, um, uh, soy res uh, residente permanente, I have it here in Japan. If I would have been stuck outside of Japan in that closed period, even I could not have come back in. The only people coming in, allowed in, were Japanese passport holders. So all um, tourism, all international students were banned from coming in. So we have taken a really big fall in the numbers of students. Um, it's just starting to come back. Today actually was the first day of classes for the second semester. Uh, when we talked about the scheduling and timetable challenges, um, not only is the time difference 13, 14 hours, but uh, we begin our, our semesters at different times. Um, so I do believe it's, I, I don't know the number right now, 1,200 maybe at the biggest point, but I'm sure it's quite lower now. But uh, yeah, I can, um, if you're really interested in that, I, you can look at the Toyo University um, English website and it'll tell you the answer, but I'm, I think it's around 1,200. Uh, but I don't know if that's before COVID or after, but thank you. Okay, so I have the opportunity to live in Germany. Germany has some similarities with uh, Japan. Yeah? If you're shocked uh, that- Some, some, they're very straight cultures mm -hmm. and they want everything on time and they don't want interruptions when people are speaking and there are some similarities. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was a shock for me, yeah. <laughs> because uh, <you> need <laughs> yeah which is the idea out of all has a time yeah? <laughs> yeah 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 thank you you're welcome thank you very much for your question okay thank you so we have another one here um from rally mm -hmm. um it says um it's from youtube i guess um can you recommend me an ad an advice for some study in an international university, can, maybe an advice for a for international university that you might know that will, I don't know. Um, well, that's a pretty broad question. Um, probably uh, my advice would be to make sure to research because depending on the country you're going to, make sure you research about the country, make sure you do your research about the university, about the program, and then uh, start to prepare uh, to know what you should bring, what you should do, and start to think about culture, because there's always going to be uh, culture shocks. Think about how the culture you're going to is similar or different from yours. And uh, also, if you're going for one year or one semester, it's a different thing. Um, but preparation, I guess, is the most important thing, both um, academically and uh, mentally great thank you ali well i think this is it right we've we've done one more yeah sure go ahead yeah uh first of all uh good morning uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you um i find this project exciting and promising uh so i have two questions for our reporters um How do you think this project can influence uh, students in the future? How do you think? And that's it. Thank you. Want to take that, Ali? Well, um, if I base it on the interview that Salvador and I did last week with uh, two of our students, um, I think that uh, 
students are able to talk to such a diverse range of other students. Um, and I think they really appreciate the different uh, ways of thinking and the different uh, uh, learning about culture and learning about how different cultures and different people communicate in different ways. So if you study about cross-cultural communication, uh, for example, uh, in in USA or Canada, we're, the culture there is very direct. We'll say yes or no. In Japan, that doesn't happen. Um, it's not culturally, uh, you know, it's it's not culturally acceptable to say no in a strong way. So I think probably to me the biggest thing students uh, learn is um, as far as their themselves personally go, it's learning about new cultures. Uh, and as far as academically and then in their future careers go, it can be about um, networking and making connections, which is also very, very important in today's world. Networking is uh, very important in the business world. So Salvador, do you have anything to yes. add? To I, I will uh, join from your last coming, the networking. I was actually thinking that it's so important. Um, I think that um, I've always thought that life is about options. So if you join this kind of things, it will get you to meet people. And when you meet people, um, options might arise. The more people you know, um, the more options you have. So um, in this case, you'll be meeting people from Japan, faculty and students. So if you are a person that would like to travel, um, if you join this kind of um, learning things or this kind of workshops, maybe some, maybe nothing will happen, maybe. Or maybe you can um, join and be able to um, share experiences and maybe um, we'll get this connection with people that will bring you options. So that's, um, that's the thing that I wanted to add, all this option thing. Thank you for your question. All right, is that it? Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. I had a wonderful uh, time today. Okay. Well, have a good night there in Japan. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Alice Mackenzie. Oh, thank you're very you. welcome. Thank you thank for the you opportunity. And sharing with us here in this faculty of accounting and management. Thank you. Thank you for all the people, uh, the people who has been here with us today. Y muchas gracias, Salvador. De verdad, gracias a todos los asistentes. Me voy a permitir eh, leer la constancia de agradecimiento. La Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, la Facultad de Contaduría y Administración, otorgan el presente reconocimiento a Alison Mackenzie y a Salvador Andrade Ortiz por su destacada participación como ponente en la conferencia Toyo University en es León, UNAM León, a Multidimensional Experience of Collaboration. Muchas gracias, que fue llevada a cabo el 23 de septiembre y firma nuestro director, el maestro Tomás Humberto Rubio Pérez. Muchas gracias. Gracias a todos.